back in you know the 90s 2000s there's a show called pimp my ride but i think it needs to come back it's time to pimp my buddy's ride my buddy reggae tron yeah man all right <laughs> Welcome to Weekend Social Builds. Cheers. Weekend yeah. Social! Weekend Social. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>since I started working in the wood shop here in Castle, Socialvania, I've been wondering how am I going to organize my tools. It's kind of just laid out all over the place. It's a bit of a mess. It's improving, but it's not where I want it to be. So I did a lot of research and I came across what are called French cleats. Now, when I first heard the term French cleat, I thought it was a move that I missed out on learning in college. Uh, but it turns out it's actually a, a way of hanging things uh, pretty simply. So the, the theory is that you've got a piece of wood, a two by four, with a 45 degree angle in it. One piece is gonna be mounted to the wall, so it would be mounted like this to the wall. And then another piece, which you can use, and I've just got this on here, a piece of scrap wood for a demo purpose. Um, you can build boxes, you can build holders, you can build whatever, and it slides into this receiving piece like so. It's sturdy, it's supposed to be really strong, and I've got enough of this wall framing, enough studs, where I think I can do it here in the basement. But I've got a friend who is looking to do the exact same thing, and let me introduce you to him. The Jamaican sensation, Reggaetron, is here. Yeah. So, Reggaetron, uh, you have a job that you're fortunate enough to get to be on the road, mm -hmm. but it requires your tools to be right. on the road with you. Yes, sir. And so... You're looking for a way to have a shelving tool organization yeah. in your mobile, your, your van for your job. We'll say nameless job. Yeah, I need a, I need a shelf for my nameless job in my van so I can have all my tools just set up on that shelf. I need it to be really pristine, you know, so when I open my van in the at work and the guy sees it, it's like one of a kind wooden shelf. So know? this... This, I think the French cleat system will allow you to modify it however you want. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take some measurements. We're going to draw it out here. We're going to spec it out, and then we'll start uh, building. But yeah. first things first, let's get to the van. We're going to uh, take some measurements. So this is the back of Reggaetron's van, and he wants to have the wall right here. Now, we were just looking at it, and it looks like we're going to have enough points where we can secure this to the wall pretty easily. And then also we'll be able to custom cut around the wheel well where we'll have as much real estate against the wall as possible. And you want it, you want it basically flush the same level as these other shelves that you've got in here, right? Yes, yes. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool. Well, we got some, he's already got some wood down there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to build some, build the structure. And then we'll figure out uh, what kind of tools we're going to be putting in these boxes. Yeah. Awesome, man. All right. All right, let's get to measuring. All right, so we got the measurements done. Uh, I'm going to start uh, building this frame out. First thing we're going to do is build the frame. Yeah. Uh, the next step, we've got some requirements here, and I'll show you that uh, in a picture of this and go through what we've been talking about. But the first order of business is doing the frame. Once we do that, then we can figure out what tools are going to go on there and how to customize this box. Yeah. But I think this is going to be a really cool project. Yeah. I've never seen a uh, French cleat wall in a van before. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas to make it a little bit more sturdy and keep the noise down. But yeah. are you excited? I'm excited. All right, let's yeah. get to it. We can social builds. Yeah, we can social. So after talking to Reggaetron and getting a list of his tools, he and I uh, batted around a couple of ideas, and I started defining some key principles for this build, some requirements. So knowing that he's got a bunch of different tools and that he's going to be on the road in his van, I came up with four requirements. First, since he's going to be moving around, it's got to be secure. And because he's going to be on the phone, I want it to be as quiet as possible because moving him around, it's going to lead to vibration. The other thing, since he's got a bunch of different tools that need to be on this thing, it's got to be functional and be able to take a variety of different types of devices. So we need to measure those for ideal fit. Then last but not least, Customers and his co-workers are going to be looking this, looking at this. So it is got to look iry, man. And me go do it. So with that being said, it came up with a pretty, just a, a generic design. We're going to see how it works. It's probably going to evolve. But this is how it's going to look in the front. So you can see 
These are the boards right here. These black bars are the support beams. We're going to need to cut out for the wheel well there. And if you look for the side, from the side, it's going to be coming in this way. Now, here's something I want to test. If we've got a French cleat and it's going to be mounted like this, screwed into the wall, if we were to put a, I guess, a bumper plate underneath to prevent falling, that's what we're looking for. So we've got the measurements. We're going to make it work. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to get to cutting. Step one was cutting the two by fours into 46 inch long pieces. I ended up with eight of them and I used the speed square as a brace so I could keep the line straight. For the outside support beams, I used 46 inch pieces of two by three. And then I lined everything up because I just wanted to see how everything was coming together and get a visual representation in my mind of how it was all gonna be laid out. Then I measured the exact center of each one of the two by fours and through that exact center drew a 45 degree line, which I was gonna use as a reference point for when I made the rip cuts on the table saw. Took everything apart and I also took one bys and cut out 46 inch pieces for the inside supports. And then I moved on to the table saw and this part gave me the most anxiety. Uh, I set the table saw at 45 degrees and began cutting the two by fours. I had to stop midway through a couple times because it kept blowing the fuse and need to work on wiring here in the wood shop, I guess. But eventually I got all eight of them cut. And before I put them aside, I labeled all of them to make sure I had the corresponding top and bottom pieces. Then I reassembled everything in order with the inside support beams just to make sure that all of the cuts were at the right length and everything was coming together the right way. So I wanted to give a better look of how I'm putting this together. Now I wanted to lay everything out first. I'm not screwing it in yet because I wanna do some final measurements, but you can see I've got the support beams over here, right on the side. I've got these smaller one by ones on the inside. And then I've got some support braces that come up to this third piece. Now this third piece is at 13 inches, which theoretically should give that wheel well uh, enough clearance. Now you can see I've made this line here and this is where that curve of that wheel well is gonna be, but I don't wanna screw anything down until I get another measurement of Regatron's van. Now that's happening tomorrow. He's coming over. We're gonna go over a couple things. First, final measurements, exactly how much clearance I need to put at that very top because it slants in a little bit. And then I also need to figure out what kind of tools he wants to put on the French cleats. So that happens tomorrow. So Regatron just left. I wasn't able to film it. He had to get to work, but I was able to take some additional measurements. Now, one of the things I wanted to run by him was the back of the frame where the French cleats are. I wanted to have a full board so it has a little bit more structure and support when you're sliding the individual pieces in. The other thing I wanted to run by him is a couple of ideas that I had for stability and keeping these things locked to the wall. I've got two in mind. We're going to try them both out, maybe a third. And hey, we may use one, multiple, who, do, who knows? But let's get to cutting. Let's put this thing together and uh, got some gluing to do. Out my trusty Japanese pole saw, best 10 bucks I ever spent, and measured the board down to 47 inches wide. The shelves are going to be 46 inches high, which means I'm going to need two of these sheets of plywood. And once I had those sheets of plywood cut in the same width, I went ahead and used my drywall T-square to draw the lines for where the boards were going to go. I glued the outer supports to the back of the board first. I'm going to come in with screws on the other side, but I wanted to give it a little bit of structure before I did anything else. And the lines on the other side are going to let me know where I can screw and uh, provide some additional structure. Clamp both of these boards down, and since I had a little bit of time, I went out and ran some errands. So while we're letting the glue dry, I needed it to go by and get some money claws anyways. But I also stopped by Home Depot and picked up a bunch of crap. Why? Because I'm trying to figure out how to make these boxes and these components lock into the French cleats. And by chance, YouTube showed me in my feed a video. Now, I don't know if YouTube spies on me like my Facebook feed does, but YouTube showed me this video by this guy. His channel is called Workshop Junkies, and his projects are, are only rivaled in coolness by this guy's accent. This guy is awesome. He comes up with some really cool ideas, and he had a video that talked about self-locking French cleats. We're gonna give those a shot. I went ahead and bought some springs, some bolts, some washers, and of course, a couple nuts. But 
we're gonna go ahead and get back to business as soon as I go pick up some money claws. So let's get back to work. I screwed both pieces of the plywood and all of the shelving boards to the supports, and now I'm adding some additional supports on the back to hold the weight of Regatron's tools. Because of the wheel well, I'm having to work around that, and I'm trying to space these out evenly so that we have enough structure to hold that weight. So I screw them in, and I'm trying to get them screwed in from the other side back into those boards, so coming from behind going to the front. Once I had those glued and screwed in, I moved on to making the first module for a Regatron shelf, which is going to be a paper towel holder. I figured this was going to be an easy first build. I used one inch PVC pipe and one inch wood dowels for the rods, and then I cut out circles from the half millimeter underlayment, and the backing board was going to be half inch plywood scrap that was left over from the wheel well. I took everything over to the belt and disc sander. I wanted to make sure that everything had nice smooth edges and I wanted these backing boards to have good rounded corners. So once that was done, I started mounting everything to that backing board. The PVC pipe was a little bit challenging uh, with the hollow center, but eventually got it to work using glue. And then I cut one of the hanging pieces of two by four to length, uh, mounted it to the backing board and screwed it in good and tight. Made sure everything was glued in, good to go. So here is the first of many components that we're gonna be building for this board. This one is actually a paper towel holder, one for shop towels and one for regular towels. It slides in just like that. And this board that's right here leans up against here, providing a little bit of pressure and it butts up very nicely there. So there it is. Now here's the challenge right here. Let's say it's bouncing around in the truck. How do we keep this stabilized? That problem's gonna be solved soon, but in the meantime, I went back to work on the components on his shelves and started with a two-tiered box system. I used the half millimeter plywood for the back and the bottom, and then I used the five millimeter underlayment for the outside and the spacers in between. Wanted to make sure that these were good and square, so I spent a lot of time bracing and gluing them together, and then I made the individual spacers using my table saw, cutting them out to size, making sure that we had a good tension fit, trying to be as precise as possible here. Now this required a lot of sanding to make sure that I got each one of those spacers in without compromising the integrity of the shelves or making them bend out. The top tier is gonna have three larger compartments for the bigger tools and the bottom tier is gonna have five smaller compartments for things like screws, chargers, what have you. And once I got them all glued in, I clamped everything together to make sure there was a good grip from the glue and moved on to the next component. And that next component was the hand tool holder. This is meant for screwdrivers and wrenches. Wish I would have done a little bit more work touching it up at the end, but it still works. I started off by using the Japanese pull saw to go ahead and cut the base where the tools were gonna sit. And then I measured out where the tools were actually gonna sit in the board and used my hand drill to drill the holes. Another change I would have made in hindsight is making the screwdriver holes a little bit more accessible to a flathead screwdriver. Phillips head works really well here, but flathead's not so much. Then I moved to the holes for the wrenches and I used my jigsaw to cut these out. I probably could have gone back and finished them up with a router to get good clean lines, but they work, they serve their purpose. Once all that was done, I took it over to the belt sander, got some good round corners, round edges and then began mounting it to the backing board and using the, uh, the speed square and making sure that I had a good 90 degree angle before moving on to the next component, which was the power drill holder. Early on in the design sessions with Regatron, he indicated that he's got multiple drills and impact drivers and I wanted to make sure he had a place to store those. So I began by cutting the slats for the individual drills and the top and used the five millimeter underlayment to make that happen, gave it a, a good curved top. And then on the outsides, I wanted to have a tapered edge, so I basically cut an angle down using the Japanese pull saw. After I got them cut, I checked them against the receiving base just to make sure they were cut to size. And then for the receiving base itself, I used a one and a half inch hole saw, cut the three circles, and then used a square to draw the lines where the drills were gonna fit into those slots. And I used a jigsaw to cut them out. After sanding down some of those rough edges, I took everything over the table saw, made the final cuts, cut everything to size, including the receiving plate and the backing base. And everything from this component was essentially done. Time to move on to the next one, which was the pliers rack. 
At the start of this build, I had no idea how I was going to get pliers mounted to this board, so I did a little bit of research, and the best solution that I could come up with or could find on the internet was using a dowel and essentially doing a hanging rack. I decided that I was going to go with a two-tiered rack, essentially an L shape, and I'm going to use a quarter inch dowel. So I started by cutting the outsides, making sure that we had the backing board already assembled. With the outsides, I was going to put the dowels in first, then mount everything to that backing board. So first, I drilled the quarter inch holes where the dowels were going to go. I used wood glue to secure them in place. I ended up breaking one of the dowels, so I had to cut another one to length. Uh, once I got them both mounted, I just secured the other side with wood glue and made sure everything was flush on both sides and mounted it to the backing board. Next up was a pretty simple piece, which is the pin and the glove holder. Essentially just three pipes and built a little box for his uh, latex gloves and dispensing. Essentially this is just an L with uh, everything built on top of that. So I started by building that and making sure it was a 90 degree angle and then sanding down the pipe uh, and then built a box. And then I finished up with the magnet board, which was one of the easier pieces to put together for these shelves. I luckily had a piece of plywood that was the perfect fit for those magnet bars that I got from Harbor Freight. So all I needed to do was cut a receiving piece at the same length and mounted those strips to the backing board and the backing board to the receiving piece and boom, you're done. Okay, let me give you a rundown of this board. It is a total of nine different components. Let me show you how everything is laid out. This first piece, it looks kind of big and bulbous and uh, simple, but actually it's meant to hold something like a sawzall in place. Now I put it at an angle so it kind of offsets. We've got a very nice perpendicular uh, sharing of the weight. Size of the board is because it's going to be a heavier tool. You want to give it a little bit more real estate. Next up is this section, which is meant for screwdrivers and wrenches. So gave them a couple of options. Got a little bit more cleanup to do at the top, but still pretty functional. Pretty happy with how it's laid out. Next one over, uh, it looks a little crazy. It's for pens and pencils. Got little holders there, kind of at a tiered system. And then this is for some gloves. You put them in there, you got a nice little dispenser on this side. Now, every shop has favorite tools. Mine, it's the uh, Japanese pull saw. Gotta have a place to store those guys. Well, there you go. It's on the magnet board and it holds other tools too. Of course, being a plumber, you're going to need to clean up a mess. So we've got regular paper towels, shop towels. Down here, this is actually meant for pliers. Two rungs. So you can have two tiers there. Now up top, you've got this guy. It is meant for drills, impact drivers, what have you. Did three of them. So you can store them there. This is going to be a catch-all. You can put your batteries down here. You can put screws couple of bigger boxes up there for things like hammers, your larger screwdrivers, put other stuff in there, and then a catch-all box that Regatron asked me to build. I didn't do a video of this one. It was last minute, but it's basically just a box with a lid. Got a little bit of work to do to make this thing land flush, but he wanted something so he could put his Dremel in there, etc. So These shelves are going to be mounted on the right side of the van. So picture this is the front of the van up there. Right side, going to be mounted against the wall. If he hits the gas, stuff's going to fly this way. You don't want these coming off, so I built these little blocks to stop. Now you can see, to keep them from bouncing off, I've got these little protectors. But what if Regatron hits the brakes? Well, I built something for him. If you look here, he's able to slide things on and off, but we want to be able to contain it if he slams on the brakes. So I built this lever, which pulls everything down and locks it in place. A bit of thinking, but we're gonna spare you the boredom of watching me do all the painting. We're going to get straight to, right now, putting it into Reggaetron's van. So, DJ, bomb them, never stop. DJ, bomb them, never stop. I, I'm on the go. I, I know you I, know, you know. I, God, no, I, God, no. I'm on the go, I'm on the go. What you think, bro? Yeah, it looks good, man. I love it. So, in all sincerity, guys. It did take a little bit of time to get in there. Getting it mounted to the wall up here. Took a little bit of modifications, but it's all in. And at the front, I'm gonna come around and show you at the front. Mm -hmm. They've got the uh, 
the lock is holding everything in place. Yeah, there you go. It's all locked in place. Not going nowhere. Hey, be careful with those brakes, Regatron. <laughs> Good. Jeez. <laughs> And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another successful weekend social build. Uh, you can actually see the French cleats on the wall here in the wood shop in the basement of Castle Social Vania behind me. Comes at a perfect time. Those drawers that I've had in the corner, um, after 15 years, those plastic pieces of shit have finally failed. So I'm going to be reorganizing the wood shop. So guaranteed you're going to be able to see those French cleats in future build videos. But I do want to say a couple of things about this project uh, itself. Number one, it was great to be able to do something like this for my buddy Regatron, and I hope he enjoys the shelves as much as I've enjoyed putting them together. Uh, but regarding the French cleat system, it's it's really surprised me. I highly recommend it. The utility is off the charts. Uh, if you put them together the right way, they'll be able to hold a ton of weight. And if you space everything uh, apart enough, you can pretty much do anything that you want with them. I think they look good painted. I think they look good bare bones. So. What I will say, the ultimate lesson learned regarding French cleats is uh, your imagination is the blueprint. You can do anything. And I hope that this video has echoed that. Now, speaking of this video, I, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Uh, be you know, Subscribe to be notified for future videos. And if you have any questions or comments, put them below. And I promise you, I will answer each and every one of them. Thank you so much so far for your support. I've really enjoyed hearing from you guys. Um, with that being said, on behalf of eMoney and myself, I want to say happy holiday, holidays to everyone. And um, for future videos, by the way, uh, we've got a very exciting project coming up, a version two of a past build. And I guarantee you it's going to knock your socks off. I've already got a head start on it. But thank you so much for watching. This is the Chisler signing off. This has been Weekend Social Builds. Chisler out.